Hello, in this video, I'll show you the different uses of frequency separation that you can apply to your photos when it comes to Photoshop. So, oftentimes we understand or we know frequency separation as a skin retouching technique. So, in this video, I'll show you the different ways you can use frequency separation apart from skin retouching to make your photos better when it comes to Photoshop. And you can see this is the first instance, and you can see before and after you can see we can use frequency separation to iron clothes or to remove wrinkles from clothes when it comes to photoshop so i'll just delete this and i show you how you can use frequency separation to remove folds and wrinkles from your clothes so for this tutorial i'll be using my photoshop actions to make this, this kind of process a little bit faster so the tutorial is not a very long one so i'll just come to my actions and i look for my skin retouching actions right here so I'm just going to play any kind of action. So in case you want to get or download my action, simply check the link in the video description to download my frequency separation or skin retouching action. So I'll simply come and play any action that is either 8-bit or 6-bit, 16-bit. So I'll just come and I play the 16-bit action right here. So just select the action and click on the play button. And you can see it stops at the point whereby we have to determine the amount of gush and blood that we want to apply to this very image so for this we are only looking at the wrinkles in this case so you have to use a very low radius so take the radius down and you click on an area that has prominent wrinkles and move the radius slider and stop at the point where by those wrinkles are just starting to disappear so ensure that you use a very low radius in case you want the method to be a little bit effective so I'll just come and click ok and you can see the action has created for us the frequency separation layers. So for this step, what we have to do is simply coming and turning off the texture or the high frequency layer so that we can only look at the colors. After this, simply come the brushes and get the mixer brush tool. And here are the settings that you have to use for your mixer brush tool. So for the settings, I'll make sure the hardness is set to 0%. Soft round brush is selected. Then clean brush is also selected and make sure this second option that is clean brush up after each stroke is selected because the fabric or the cloth that we're going to be working on has varying colors. That is why we want the brush to automatically be cleaned by Photoshop as we are trying to remove the wrinkles or folds from the outfit. The weight is going to be 9%, load is 75%, mix is 90%, flow is 100%. Make sure sample areas is not turned on. So how do you apply this? You are simply going to start brushing over the cloth or the fabric in this case. So I'm just going to see these wrinkles here. So to remove these wrinkles, you have to paint in an opposite direction. So you can see these wrinkles are moving from up to down. So for the brush, simply click and hold down and you move the brush in the opposite direction. And this is going to eliminate the wrinkles in that given area. So just keep on doing this. So depending on where the wrinkle is, you have to move the brush in the opposite direction to paint and blend the wrinkles in the image. So you have to use a very small brush to keep within the creases or the folds of the outfit. So I'm just going to paint like that. And you can see by just doing this, you can see the wrinkles have been gotten rid of from this very outfit. So you can see what we have in this case you can see the result and now the outfit is now looking ironed and it has no wrinkles and folds in it so just paint like that and you can see by just simply painting over these areas of the outfit we are getting rid of the folds and wrinkles so this is how you can use frequency separation apart from using it to retouch your photos or apart from using it for skin retouching. So I'm just going to blend like that. You can see to remove these wrinkles, I'll blend in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to turn on the texture layer to show you the effect or the difference between this side and this other side. So you can see the before, after, before, after, before, after. So that is the function number one that you can use a frequency separation apart from using it to retouch skin in your photos to make them look better so let's look at image number two so for image number two in order to make it look better you can see this is a before 
after, before, after. We can use frequency separation to clean dirty shoes when it comes to Photoshop. We can use frequency separation to clean up dirty shoes right here in Photoshop. You can see before and after. And I want to show you how we can clean dirty shoes when it comes to Photoshop. I'll delete this cleaned layer and come to my action and click the play button. So it doesn't matter if you play the 8-bit or 16-bit kind of action. So after playing the action, it is going to stop at the point where you have to determine the Gaussian blur radius that you have to apply. So I'm just going to come and I move the radius slider higher. But I stop at the point where I'm just starting to lose out on the details in the shoe sole. And I'll basically come and click OK. So you can see action has played and for this point or for this kind of technique, just come and make sure you have turned on the high frequency layer in this case. And after turning on the high frequency layer, come to this middle layer in your frequency separation. Just come to the middle layer, make sure it is selected. Then for this point, we are not going to be using the mixer brush tool. We are basically going to be using the normal brush tool. So just come to the brushes and get the brush tool. And for the settings, make sure the hardness is set to zero. Soft one brush is selected, the mode is set to normal, opacity at 100%, flow also at 100%. After doing this, we are just going to slightly zoom in by using Command Plus on the keyboard to zoom into this very shoe. You can see it looks dirty. So in order to work on the shoe sole to look better, we are just going to sample color from a clean area just below the shoe sole. So hold down the Option key on the keyboard, alternate for Windows Option, and click on that clean area that you prefer under the shoe sole, and click on it. And you can see a sample that color. So what is left is simply getting the brush tool and paint over the shoe sole, and this is going to remove the dirty area from the shoe sole. So just paint like that. I know color may be spilling to other areas like the background, so you have to be careful in some cases, but I'll show you how you can perfect the colors to remain within a given area. So even for this second shoe, you can do the same technique. So option, click to sample a clean color, and you simply paint over that shoe as well to clean it. So reduce on the size of the brush by using the square bracket keys on the keyboard and just paint like that. So once you're done painting, the next step is simply going to be correcting the color or limiting colors in particular areas so it doesn't spill over the background. So with this layer selected, you can come and get the eraser tool. And for the settings, the hardness is set to zero. The mode is set to brush opacity and flat 100%. You're just going to use the eraser tool to rub away these extra colors from these other areas like the backdrop so get the eraser tool and start painting just like that so i'm just going to paint and eliminate color from areas where the color had spilled initially just like that just paint like that so you can see how it is revealing the initial or original color of the backdrop while limiting the clean effect only affect our shoe in this case so I know this takes some time, but you have to also take time to perfect your image to your liking. So take your time as you're doing the cleanup process, because at the end of the day, you don't want the color spill to be present in the final images. So take your time just doing this, and you can see what we, are, we have in this case. So do the same for the next show. Like I said, you always have to take your time while doing this kind of process. So I'll paint like that and paint the extra area. You can see the brush color spilled over to nearby areas in this very photo or in this very image. So this is what we have right now. So let's see the before and after. You can see before, after, before, after. So this is how you can use frequency separation apart from using it to retouch skin when it comes to Photoshop. You can see you can use it to clean the tissues in Photoshop and you can as well use it to remove wrinkles and iron fabric when it comes to Photoshop. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you have been watching and you're not yet subscribed to this channel. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more videos on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating.